Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Tuesday, September 17th, 2019. Take a look at our solar wind speeds. Finally dipping below 400, we are sitting at 375.2 kilometers per second with a density of 5.4. Our sun is blank again. That now makes 14 days in a row without sunspots. 183 days in a row, I'm sorry, 183 days for 2019 without sunspots. Take a look at our TCI, that's the Thermosphere Climate Index. It's coming in at 4.12. Our record space age cold for that is 2.05, just to give you an idea of how cold the TCI is. And the record high for the TCI is 49.5. So even though we are not near the record at this moment, we are still extremely cold in the TCI. Uh, let's take a look at the SDO in motion. If I can get that screen to pop up here. Here we go. All right. Take a closer look at our star, that southern coronal hole that we should be feeling the solar wind today and tomorrow, according to this. Now, uh, right now, there's not been any increase in solar wind. In fact, it's been a little bit of a decrease. And also, as far south as that hole is on the sun, it's a good chance that it'll just graze the southern edge of our magnetic field. So uh, nothing really to worry about with this particular uh, corona hole. We do see some slight development, though, as another one might be opening up as it becomes Earth facing. And then we have one that we're tracking on the eastern limb. On the other side of the eastern limb of our sun, we also see a potential for a large corona hole to make its way here in the next couple of days. But we will keep our eyes on that as well. All right, let's take a look at some national forecast stuff here today, guys. Uh, rain across Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. Everybody in the Northern Plains has a shot at some rain today. Uh, it's currently showers and storms right now in Washington and Oregon, Montana and Idaho as well, parts of Utah. But chances of showers throughout the Central Plains the Midwest, believe it or not, staying kind of quiet. Some spotty, scattered showers across the region. Nothing in the east or the northeast to really speak of. But there is a little bit of action towards the Gulf. And let's go ahead and take a look at that a little bit closer. I do have a... Here we go. So today we are expecting possible flooding near Galveston and Houston as this tropical depression, we should call it, uh, is making an impact on the Texas coast as we speak. Beaumont is probably expected to get in on the action at some point later today with the rain showers will continue throughout the day. Right now, Corpus Christi, you're staying dry. Victoria, also dry for the moment, but the main focus here on this particular storm is in the Houston Galveston area. We will be watching this for any floods and we'll break through with any breaking news if we need to. All right, let's take a look at our other storms here. Berto, uh, it is a Cat 1 hurricane with 100 mile an hour winds, the pressure of 961. It's moving east, nor east northeast at eight miles per hour. This storm is no longer a concern. And then we have Invest 97 back here. that has a 90% chance of development in 48 hours and a 90% chance of development in five days as well. So we will continue to monitor this. Let's take a look at Invest 97's track. This is what they're thinking right now. I know we've showed you some pretty scary looking GFS models and it's kind of the reason why we probably shouldn't put too much stock into something that's two or three weeks out. Right now, this particular storm, Invest 97, does appear that it will, again, turn away from the United States and there will not be a threat to the East Coast also some good news, the Bahamas being spared once again. So good news, we've had some action in the Atlantic, which is usual for this time of year. But the good news about it is that these storms are not gonna make it. And, and I'll tell you, looking back here, guys, check this out, that's it. There's nothing else coming off of Africa. We are at, at September 17th, if you guys remember uh, 2017 September we had a lot of action going on we are peaking at this point right now it's just not happening and somebody made a comment the other day that they know conservatives that are believing in global man-made global warming because of all the hurricanes I have one question for you folks what hurricanes 
Yes, we had Hurricane Dorian in September. Uh, I'd like to go back and do some research and find out when was the last time that we had a named storm that was a major hurricane this late in the year. Uh, just think about that for a minute. But either way, we don't have any other hurricanes uh, threatening the United States or the Bahamas or anywhere in the Caribbean or anything in the Gulf. And it's this is peak season for it. I expected to see a little bit more. I'm not complaining. I'm glad. But this is also an indication of cooler ocean waters too, folks, especially out in the Atlantic. So, yes, it's peak hurricane season, but you have to have water temperatures. And last year, we had a problem with the North Atlantic. And this year, it's just not the atmosphere and the water temperatures are not cooperating. And let's keep our fingers crossed that we don't have to deal with any more threats there is worry of a possible October hurricane, but at this point right here, I just don't see it in the making. Again, this is all we have as far as tropical uh, storms and hurricanes to date. So we will keep you updated. Let's take a quick look at the GFS just for a couple days. Just to show you both storms. Let me scroll this up a little bit so everybody can see. There you go. All right, so there is Umberto off the coast moving away. Again, Fair weather across the United States for the next couple of days. Showers and storms across the United States, but nothing severe, nothing crazy. This is typical fall-like weather. Showers and spotty storms. Now, I will say North Dakota and South Dakota and up there in the Northern Plains, you guys might have a little bit of a rough ride here over the weekend, next weekend. And then some storms and showers look like they will develop uh, over across the Midwest by early next week on Monday. And then, guys, if, if you can see it here at the bottom, I'm going to get my handy-dandy blue, not the other one, but the blue one. This is the Invest 97. All right, and let's watch what happens to this. Very disorganized and takes off, okay? So really, we're going to be shifting our focuses back in this area here, guys. Uh, not to downplay anything in the tropics or the Atlantic, but I think it's important we keep our eyes on this area right here especially when it comes to temperatures and precipitation um you know this area here does not need flooding rains whatsoever uh, we need heat and dry days uh, this low pressure system here let's see what happens to it as we move through the week next week and it kind of hangs around for a couple days so very funny looking low pressure system moving across the united states towards the end of the month again this is just typical rainy patterns here at the end of a month, it's the summer. Uh, it's trying to do its last hoorah and a couple more chances for severe weather across the Midwest by late month. And then October 1st, uh, we really see things kind of make a shift. There is your October hurricane. But again, just like the last few hurricanes, this one is making the same similar track. And uh, I'd have to imagine that we have something going on with all the high pressure systems that are here in the US that are, ch that are chilling out that are keeping us protected right now because this is this would be the third storm according to the GF GFS that comes up and does this and does not come near the United States so good news let's hope it holds up we all know how the GFS forecast handles itself it changes almost on an hourly basis but last couple of days we can speak in confidence that we don't see at the point at this point we don't have any major hurricanes on the horizon and just looking at temperatures at the end of the month going into october believe it or not folks the gfs has got us on the warm side on the east coast for sure if you live directly near the coast you're going to experience 80s on october 2nd so this is good this is good weather for the east coast but as far as our farmers are concerned places like mccook nebraska is going to get a high of 69 degrees uh, central kansas 83 degrees not bad for october so the weather temperatures are working a little bit in our favor this cold front that we were talking about is not going to be as deep as south as we originally had thought in the beginning but again this is just another model run and we will just have to wait and see as far as temperatures moving forward here. So again, fall like for most of the country here in the Northeast and the Northwest, let's take a look at what they're expecting for today as far as high temps. Let's go right here. So there's your heat. 
across the central plains. So the crop land right here, guys, in the central plains and the northern plains and the Midwest. Some decent weather, very hot in the, in the deep south, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and Florida. You guys will experience some 90s, possible 100s. Same in Texas and in the far southwest corner in Phoenix, Arizona, and Southern California as well. But the rest of the country, I mean, we got daytime highs in parts of Idaho at 38 degrees for a high. So fall is definitely right on the doorstep. And like I said, hopefully, hopefully we can continue to monitor these temperatures and they stay warm enough and let these farmers do their job so the crop can be uh, harvested in time. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for our morning report. Stay tuned to the Grand Solar Minimum News Channel. If there is anything else that is breaking, we will come across the air. Also, we will be live once again on Wednesday night, 9 p.m. for our Grand Solar Minimum News Update Evening Edition. And don't forget to check us out on Patreon, where we are now doing a call-in show every Saturday starting around 8 p.m. If you want to be a part of the fun, guys, all it takes is a dollar. Join the Patreon for a dollar a month. You now have the phone number. You have access to all exclusive content because there will be other things that we put up on Patreon, such as other interviews, prepping ideas. But the main thing that the main attraction for the Patreon is the call-in, the participation with the show. A buck a month is all it takes, folks. All right, guys, we're going to take off. We'll see you tomorrow morning and then again in the evening. Until then, we will talk soon. Take care, guys. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below. Thank <laughs> you.